So the NBA this season has been interesting. Teams like the Jazz started off as the one seed in the West and are now down as the eight seed. But one team is doing the most shameless tanking for Victor I've ever seen, and I gotta respect it. A team who started off 5-2 and two have now gone on to lose 16 of their last 17 games and are currently on an 11-game losing streak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the Spurs the three greatest players in the history of their franchise. Obviously, the greatest player in the history of the Spurs franchise is Tim Duncan. No one's going to question that. Two MVPs, three finals MVPs, nobody, and I repeat, nobody is going to question whether or not Tim Duncan is the best player in Spurs history. Second best player, a guy who won an MVP, a guy who won a scoring title, David Robinson. Again, I don't think too many people are going to question David Robinson being there. But the third player is an interesting one. In terms of peak, it's Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard in the 16, 15, 16, and 16, 17 season had two better seasons than any other player in the Spur history of the Spurs franchise. And then, obviously, Manu Ginobili. Everything he did just looked beautiful. But Manu Ginobili's like biggest like at accomplishments were on the international stage. For me, it's a guy who's won a finals MVP, who would have won another finals MVP had Ray Allen not hit the crazy shot. A guy who was easily the top a top three point guard in the NBA for five or six years. And honestly, from 2009 to 2014, you could argue was as good as Tim Duncan. So if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We're putting one video every single day in December. We are doing a daily December. I see some of the biggest videos that I will be uploading for the foreseeable future. We're trying to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if we could hit that, that'd be insane. But anyway, now let's get on to the video. So this is the Spurs lineup. We've got Tony Parker, David Robinson, Tim Duncan, Devin Vassell, and Calden Johnson. So going from being one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in basketball, to a team like this... I mean, I'm not going to lie, the team's pretty good. The team is going to be pretty, pretty good. So let's see how we get on till Christmas. Obviously not having a Christmas day. Heck, even when the Spurs were good, they weren't even playing on Christmas day. Like, they just were not a popular franchise. No matter how good they had been, they just were not popular. Okay, going to Christmas 22-10. and 10. That's not a great record. It's enough for first in the conference by quite a bit. I'm not going to lie. But it just seems like there's a lot of teams. The Pacers? Who do the Pacers have? It's just their normal team. And the Pacers, the second best record in the NBA. The Mavs, 21 and 13. I mean, the Mavs only show up when it matters. They'll show up against the Warriors, they'll show up against the Suns, they'll show up when it matters, and that's about it. So let's see how the, we are getting on, uh, how the players are getting on. I'm guessing in terms of points, Tony or Tim, Tony's the top scorer, followed by Tim, followed by D-Rob. Tony averaging 25 and 12 with nearly two steals a game. Like, that's MVP caliber season. Like, that is a borderline MVP caliber season. Tim Duncan, 23 and 12. 20 and 10 for David Robinson. Kelvin Johnson playing okay. Devin Vassell playing okay. But honestly, that is an MVP type season from Tony Parker. Like, if anyone's going to win MVP on this team, it probably is going to be Tony. So, coming up to the All-Star break, we're finally starting to look like a, look like a contending team. Couple of injuries, but no injuries to our big players throughout this entire year. 47 and 17. Just as I say that, the curse of the commentator, Tony Parker, goes and gets hurt. Now Devin Vassell goes and gets hurt. What is happening? I, this is curse of the commentator. I genuinely was like, oh, we've had no injuries. And then, boom, four to six weeks for Tony Parker. I mean, Tony Parker was only out for like two weeks. And now David Robinson. I get he's a sore left hand. I'm sorry, like, this is fully San Antonio Spurs load management. If we are out here missing games with a sore left hand, like, that is... Like, what is happening? They're all getting day-to-day -day injuries, but, like, we lost five of six games. What is happening toward the end of the season? Like, we're... We had it. And now Devin Vassell's injured. Oh, what, why, why didn't I not shut up? He says, Kelvin Jones is six to eight weeks. Why did I not shut up? Why did I not shut up? I was like, oh, we haven't had any injuries. Half our fucking team has been injured. What is happening? The Celtics are the best record in the NBA. The Spurs, Tim Duncan, at least made an all-NBA team. Like, with what I thought was going to be an MVP caliber year from Tony Parker, he didn't make an all-NBA team. Did he make a defensive team somehow? I mean, Duncan did. Nope. Did Luka make an all-defensive team? Yep, as always, Luka Doncic making an all-defensive team. And we didn't even end up as the first seed. What were we? We must have been like eight games ahead at one stage. 
Must have been. Like, what? how bad a second half of the season? So, Devin Vassell and Kel Johnson are injured. Tony Parker went down from, like, 24 and a half to 23. Like, at least Tim Duncan, 23 and 12. He had a good year. Dave Robinson, under 20. But missing out on Devin Vassell and Kelton Johnson in the playoffs? Like, there's no guarantee that we, we can win without those guys. And now Devin Vassell's back, thankfully. Let's not lose to Rudy Gobert. If that's a big one. Let's not lose to Rudy Gobert. Okay, good. That is round number one done. Come on, like, giving them a big three of prime Tony Parker, prime Tim Duncan, and prime David Robinson. If they don't come through the West, I'll be annoyed. Memphis come back from 3-1 down to beat Luka. Uh, okay, Luka's legacy's gone, I'd say. And it is two each here. 3-2 to San Antonio in this series. Oh, this is a big one to win on Memphis' home court. Memphis go and take a little bit of a lead. Not a big lead. A very small lead. And now it is up at 11 points. It looks to be done. Oh, maybe not. No, we choked. We choked. Now game seven is at our place. Kelton Johnson back though for game seven. Now that makes things very interesting. And a big start. 13 point first quarter lead. I, we're up by 20 points right here. 22 points in the fourth quarter. That is a very, very easy. Tony Parker winning Western Conference Finals MVP. Will we all beat the Philadelphia 76ers? 2-0. 2-1. 3-1. That seems to be it, lads. That seems to be it. The Spurs have a big three. Oh, they have this game. It's game over now. It's game over now. If you give the worst team in the NBA the three greatest players in their history, especially if it's a franchise like the Spurs, they're probably going to go. When I say probably, I mean probably. This is a horrendous fourth quarter. It's only a six-point game. Big finish by D-Rob. That's an eight-point game, 40 seconds to go. I think we have it. I think we've got it. Okay, they call the timeout. I don't know why. They literally inbounded a call the timeout. Jakob Pertl. Why is Jakob Pertl on the floor? Why are we putting Jakob Pertl on the floor? This is Popovich coaching. Pop, this is like when you took off Tim Duncan in that last play in 2013. You have David Robinson sitting on your bench, but you are actively choosing to play Jakob Pertl. I get it. If the question is, let's play a player who had a fun game named after him, pick Pertl. If the question should be, pick a team to win a ring, you know, Trey Jones or Devin Vassell's on the floor. I thought that was Trey Jones for a second. You got everyone out there. You got a full team out there. But for some reason, Jakob Pertl's there instead of, instead of the Admiral. Hop out here watching the Admiral stand up. Just sitting there on the end of the bench. Big shot there by Tony Parker. Eight point game. I think it's game over. Unless Harden smacks a three in Devin Vassell's face, it's game over. Harden drives to the basket. Pertl! What are you doing, man? And Parker misses the second one right there. He's missed two of four. I don't know why they gave him the free throws again. Parker was not the greatest shooter. Oh, and they turn it over. Are they going to call a timeout down 7 15 to go? This is game over. Like, unless the Spurs absolutely panic, it's game over. They brick it. Ball goes into Pirtle's hands. Josh Richardson on the floor to end the game. So, on the floor to win an NBA championship is Josh Richardson, Zach Collins, and Jakob Pertl, while the big three are just out there chilling on the bench. And it's Tony Parker going to win a finals MVP. Over Tim Duncan, over Dave Robinson, a man who was robbed. Absolutely robbed of a position in the NBA 75. I stand by that. Dude was a Ray Allen shot off of being 5-0 in the finals with two finals MVPs. While also being the top scorer for their team in the 2014 finals, dear Kawhi got finals MVP. So shout out to Oni Parker out here hooping, averaging 32 and 12 while shooting 65% from three. Probably shot like five threes in a series. It's Tony Parker. The guy lived at the rim despite the fact that he could barely dunk. One of the greatest point guards to ever live. And the biggest, him, no, sorry, not the biggest snub. Dwight was the biggest snub in 75. The second biggest snub, Tony Parker. Put Tony in instead of Dame. Get Dwight in instead of AD and I got no complaints about that. But anyway, yeah. That is the video, lads. If you give the San Antonio Spurs the three greatest players in their history, they don't need a time for Victor because they win the damn chip.